This might be a bit less of a pain in the ass than the spider. Hard to tell. Alright, so I think Yasutoko might be the name of the scientist that was Hanya Mask Guy, whose recording we actually found pretty early in the game. I don't know if he's explicitly been identified as such, but that would line up with what we've been picking up here. The whole thing, as we've just discovered before, and as he just said, has basically been about resurrecting his wife and daughter. Like, kind of, sort of. He's obviously going for some kind of New Age thing, where the, the human body is an inter intermediary state for the spirit, and properly liberating the spirit means freeing people from their bodies. In this case, destroying life as we know it. But, obviously... This begs the question of, is he actually doing this for anyone's benefit, or is this just trauma he never actually properly dealt with? I mean, this is basically the plot... Hey, Orange, good to see ya! Yeah, yeah, this is basically the ultimate plot to Arcanum. Or at the very least, has a very similar element to it, in that a frequently discussed part is... The transience of live, uh, our existence as living beings versus what happens to the soul when we die. And the idea that the spiritual plane is without suffering. Whereas reality is rife with it. And questioning what is the value of that existence. And I always kind of liked that your main companion for that, Virgil, actually has an experience very relevant to that late in the game. Where if you're playing a... Where if you're... If you're... <laughs> If you're, if you're playing on a good path, if you are doing basically good things and setting a good example for him... Yeah, there will be no more death, there will be no more chaos, exactly. I really do like the ending resolution of that and the villain, the villain speech and the villain motivation. It's honestly a pretty smart execution of a very late game twist that radically recontextualizes what you're doing. You broadly know what the bad guy is relatively earlier on, but the specifics of his identity and his plan kind of form late in the game and recontextualize what he's doing in a way that is impressive and kind of bold, and I always kind of like that. But yeah, specific to Virgil, he has an experience very relevant to what the bad guy is talking about. And I really love the line delivery on it, where he admits that he wanted to come back and finish this. Like, you know, spoilers for a 20-year-old game, he dies as a result of being on the good path. And there's an option to bring him back. And he says he honestly wanted to come back and finish this, but also admits that a small part of him wanted very badly just to stay dead because the other side genuinely is peaceful. And it's an interesting perspective that provides... an interesting point of view with respect to what the bad guy is ultimately trying to do. Okay, I'm trying as hard as I can to run, but I feel like there's no good way to get around the wave dash he's doing. Hey, here we go. Got him. Get him this time. Nice. Alright. 
one more lieutenant down. I think that's the last one, so all that's left is Hanya himself. Yeah, that's kind of the interesting point of it. <laughs> Oni, more like zero Oni. Ha <laughs> ha Nice! Oni, more like Gawney. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! That was kind of weak. Kind of been kind of a weak night for puns. I apologize. Yeah, th that's kind of the point of view I take, and that there is something to consider in his position. The flaw in his reasoning is that this is his experience, not something he has the right to decide for other people. And I do like that the diplomatic resolution to that quest, to the main quest, hits upon that logic as well. Where if you're a master negotiator, you can find the flaws in his argument and say, hey, you don't have the right to decide this just because this is what you experienced. Ooh, looks like the stream reset. There might have been a hiccup at some point. Not a bit long, but we will finish this up since we are very definitely in the end game now. All right. Oh, we got an oh, we got a new kafuda. Interesting. Very short, like ten cents seconds. Yeah, that's another interesting outcome to that, where you can basically just... Not necessarily side with the bad guy, but more or less agree that... Life kind of sucks and you'd just like it to be over. Which, if you're... Depending on your personal experience through the game, very much could be the case. Especially... Especially some of the dungeons. Like, that game got fucking hard early on. And in a way that I think caught a lot of people off guard. <laughs> More like Jabroni. Oh, okay. That's good. I'm stealing that. That's gold. That's a 10 out of 10 right there. Anyway, we're finally getting the backstory for what happened to Marie to make her in the, put her in the state she's in. Marie had an artistic streak. Two of you end up ending all life in the world before turning on each other, and you are left dying as the single, only last living thing in the world. Yeah, it's always kind of interesting in games that let you, if not side with a bad guy, sort of pull a bad ending yourself. And what nature of the apocalypse you turn on. Like, one of the most interesting, in my opinion, was the thing they added to Shadowrun Dragonfall with the uh, update that included a lot of quest content, where you can basically agree with the bad guy's plot there and inadvertently cause the end of the world. And there's like an epilogue sequence where you go through these specific things that are happening that cause things breaking down. I won't spoil it for people that haven't played it, even though the game's been out for a while. But it's a rare instance of a bad ending being genuinely interesting. And not strictly speaking push button end the world, but more you did a thing with a lot of unintended consequences. And these are those consequences. Anyway, we're now we're getting into how Kido and Marie seem to have uh, drifted apart over the years.
昔の記憶に思えるよ母さんが家のことは気にするなって言ってたマリもやりたいことやれよ Can't buy anything. Going through tormented memories of the past is thirsty work. Snacks. Awesome. Sono Yukata. Okasa, my Yukata. Yukata, Harete. Matsuritoka, Sashibri. Kso, Mio Sumkirna, Akito. The laundromat where we had so many memories. A special attachment to that bottle of fabric softener. Ooh, all right. Convenience store. Might as well load up. See if we can get some boss coffee while we're here. <laughs> Remember that time we got at that stubborn stain? Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> uh, quite. Entirely close as kids, but then their parents died. Hmm. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, we're going into Silent Hill. This is the one part in the History Museum in Silent Hill, too. Or it's just a long staircase, and at the bottom, you're in the other world. Except now we're in the forest. I feel like people wanting to spend... I, I feel like trying to judge the afterlife by what life is like here... ...haven't necessarily thought that out. Oh wait. Oh, I thought there was a... I thought there was a kitty there we could pet. Like, you gotta figure any activity you do, essentially for eternity, would eventually get boring... ...and you need some kind of stimulation, so in all likelihood... What we would consider the afterlife would probably be an entirely different existence altogether. Like, you know, we're already assuming the existence of a soul and the idea that it's an anti-homeless brace. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. Yeah, no, that fi that figures. Oh, it's okay. 
そうだ守りたいものを守るんだああもう逃げないあっああ whatever anyway back on plot task here so yeah Marie basically had gone through a lot emotionally and physically and from the sound of it just wanted things to be over with and that's what made her an ideal vessel for what Hanya Mask had in mind now I have to assume she's not necessarily unique in that regard presumably they could have grabbed anybody that was a suitable vessel and that's just who they had at the time kinda like how KK worked because he was er, er, Akito, I keep getting the two conflated now he worked as a vessel for KK because he was almost dead because yeah he tried to jump into a living person at the beginning to survive and that didn't work out so he went with Akito instead so getting a sense that there are uh, rules for spirits in this game even if they're not explicit anyway time to open this bad boy up and face our nemesis yeah I'm good yeah a little help here I want to know why they were censoring a sneakers just there I mean I know it's just the effect of the spell but that's kind of the impression I'm getting It does, yeah. It has that vibe to it. Right, yeah. The idea that it's not necessarily... You're not just a disembodied consciousness, but there is no conscious consciousness. There's a certain appeal to that. Just not having to think. Yep, nope. Suit's gone, we're back to our outfit. Our KK outfit, it is. Shoot the shit out of you first. Okay, he's doing his Emperor Palpatine thing. Yep, equip the rolled up newspaper. Time to give him a whap. Alright, Nikito, wire in. This is why we saved it up. Hurry up before he gets unlimited power. I do appreciate that cutscene combat kind of has the same... feels like gameplay combat, only with more physicality to it. Okay, fortunately he didn't summon moves that are immune to whatever he was doing. In fact, he seems to have rather nicely dispatched them for us, which is weirdly generous. Yeah, this isn't good. Yeah, he's torn a hole to the underworld. And I feel like a giant ghost is going to come out and rip his head off or something. Uh-oh. Is he pulling a JoJo on us? Is he going to go Dio Brando? Spider-Man, 
彼女が起こしているのかいやそれでも儀式は止められないどうすかああ、ゲットフォッツ。Bro, you got one shot by a. You got one shot by my little sister who's been hospitalized. Get fucked. This is where you start to see his reach exceeds his grasp in terms of、uh, spiritual matters. Also, this is why it's important to get people who are on board with being sacrificed so you don't run into situations like this. Rookie mistake. I'm surprised he made it this far. ごめん俺ずっと謝りたくて知ってるよだから私死ねなかったお兄ちゃんのせいじゃないあの時私これを何<笑> That escalated quickly. 残してくれた思い出。でも置いていけなかった<笑>マリー兄ちゃんは生きて俺最後に本当の気持ち話せてよかった。Yep, here we go. Not over yet. Also, you know, you probably could give her some of that ghost green tea you got. I'm sure that'd fix her right up. Uh oh. He's giving his dead family piggyback rides. <laughs> It really wants that throng link. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, but you're bringing your family back from the underworld and God only knows what condition. Are you even. How sure are you that's them? Like, presumably, the spiritual essence that was them is not necessarily in a form. That will have cognizance, let alone remember who. <sighs> whatever. Yeah, dunk her in a mega elixir, exactly. This is Japan, but fantasy stuff is real. Surely someone has a for real Phoenix Down you can use. Quite possibly. I mean, that's coming from KK, but I assume there's some genetic compatibility there. Oh boy. Yep. We have Ghostzilla. Let's take it out. 
That's more of a undead demon fish. Oh boy, it's evolving quickly. Alright, I need more ammo. Ow, 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 ow. A slug of some sign. Get the salt. Yeah. <laughs> Oh boy. Where's the weakness? There it is! Blast the faces. That's it. Oh boy. I felt like I couldn't possibly jump high enough for that. Alright. I see only one face has the weak point open right now. I know also that the other ghost bosses, their attacks are also elementally aspected in the same way ours are. That has been wind, water, and fire blasts. Which is an interesting bit of consistency in design. I mean, realistically, it's probably so they can code a basic set of projectiles for the engine to work with. Oh, I see the weakness. I just need to get him to expose it. Alright, so there's another weak point open. Damn. Actually, probably a good idea to bust out the arrows here. Ah! One second. Okay, Akito, move! Run, brother! I don't know what that did. Where's the Healy one? There we go. Why is it not healing? Oh, it regenerates ammo. No, it doesn't do that either. Game, you lied to me. Is this not healing? Maybe it doesn't work in bosses? Shit. Spent that money for nothing. And it's some very cross words for the Nekamata merchant when I get back to them. Should have just brought more. want more coke. Hey, here we go. Gimme! There we go. Yeah, this is basically the Jack Baker fight from Resident Evil 7. The hell are these guys? You know what? I don't want to deal with y'all right now. Gimme! Oh, no, you don't. You submerge on me. Alright, so that's a wide arc, but you can dash outside of it. It's a little like coin counters arcing its back in, uh... Uh, Orm Vale. I remember them when that did not have telegraph markings on the ground. Who's a bastard? <laughs> Zero gets it. The OG, that was probably the hardest fight in that uh, dungeon. Alright. That is a disturbingly small target. I think the arrow just does not have the splash damage to reliably hit it. Oh, that was a dead-on hit, and that just bounced right off. Alright, so I think we got to use our spirit gun here.
Nice dodge. That's two. You really have to ask. You fucking destroyed the world. What part of this are you having trouble with? <laughs> exactly, I'm kind of spoken for right now. Right, these guys I can use their arrows on. Nice. Visiting hours are over. Alright, where's your last mask? Alright, I think I gotta be really close to have the automatic fire land. Just better off with standard spirit blasts. There we go. It really does look like his fingers are censored there. What are you doing with those young men? Hey, there we go. Ha! The achievement visiting hours are over. I just did that. That's awesome. Noise. These bold words for a man attached to the ass end of a giant nether slug. Yeah, no kidding. Ghostwire Tokyo? More like Ghostwire Slow Pokyo. Ugh! I'll be here all week. Tip your waitress. <laughs> yeah, more like Nunya. Ah, <laughs> uh, you can totally bring her back, dude. All you gotta do is become a ghost scientist and, like, find a suitable vessel. And, yeah, see, here's some ghosts that you can use to, like, start you on your path. No. Oh, hey, okay. Alright, that makes more sense. I thought they were going to be just, like, taking her away or something. Well, they probably are. <laughs> just kiss her, that's how it always works. <laughs> <laughs> just turn her into a colossus. No big. Yeah, no kidding. Forget <laughs> Of course it'd be up a thousand fucking steps. Isn't there an escalator I could use? Kinda did a lot of climbing already today. Quite. <laughs> 
I mean, you know, I wouldn't say the whole thing has been fun, but, you know, there was enjoyment to be had in the journey. Yeah, I mean, presumably we could still make use of talismans in the bow. I kind of like that. It's just kind of abrupt and unceremonious. It's a good visual indicator. I guess that's game then. I meant that was kind of more sudden than I was expecting. Like, I think the end sequence was honestly pretty good. But yeah, I expected at least one more plot development after getting the bike than going to the end game era. I, I, it makes sense given the length of the game. But I'm a little surprised more wasn't done with that given the effort to acquire it. Still, though, I I quite like this. I think it, it honestly is, given the given the conflicting design ethos behind let's make a let's make a character driven spiritual adventure with a lot of interesting ghost stuff happening, and let's make a big open city game with a lot of objectives on a map to accomplish. I think they did about as good as could be done, or at the very least they did a serviceable job making those two work together. There were definitely there's definitely a tension between them where you're doing a lot of gamified stuff to make numbers go up but also we're supposed to pay attention to what the characters and the plot demand. Yeah, I, I, you can definitely tell that there were strains in development that affect the game's dev that affects the way the game came out and the lack of harmony between those conflicting... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the, the lack of harmony between the pillars of the game, per se. But I do think there are good ideas in it, and overall I think it actually I honestly plays pretty well. There are some interesting... Um, there are definitely sequences I really liked. I thought the school was very well done. I genuinely liked the characters. I think the acting and presentation were generally on points. And even though the bad guy kind of fell into the usual megalomania, there was still interesting elements of the character to unpack, and they did a lot of storytelling non-verbally, which I quite like. They let, gave you time to sort of let the scene tell some of the story, and let the things the characters aren't saying help to establish the mood and tone. Now, it's still ultimately victim to 
big budget Bethesda publisher constraints. Like, I honestly believe some of the open city stuff was just mandated from on high, saying, hey, this hey, game must have this, uh, this game must have this. And in some cases, I do think it's also... Some of that can be attri attributed to developer overreach, but I do think a lot of it probably stems from the top down. Yeah, I, I, they mostly it pinned down a good aesthetic and maybe could have made another less scuffed Ghostwire game, but I understand there's basically no chance for that to happen. Yeah, yeah. Given how... Given the... Given the effort it took to get this out, I can't imagine this is a property they're going to be revisiting. Which is a shame. Yeah, AAA gonna AAA. I do think as a one-off title, it's relatively solid. And I absolutely would recommend this. Even because, even if only because I do think it's genuinely fun to run around a big chunk of Tokyo do parkour stuff. Just on the superficial Wii aspect of climbing tall buildings, gliding around, seeing what's around these corners, finding recognizable points of interest, and taking the usual... taking, taking the usual open-world objectives and giving them kind of a spiritual Shinto edge to them and making, th making them properly part of the game world, if not necessarily part of the story. It was dense, but it didn't feel too bloated, is the thing. It felt like it had a good amount of side content that didn't... that didn't really... Dis that, that didn't distract me too much from the main objective. It felt like this is all stuff I could do on the way to the core points of interest, and the critical path through the game gave me a good sense of the world they were going with. But yeah, I think it's overall a decent game. Again, I, I hate to put numbers on things, but this feels like a solid 7 to 8 out of 10 experience that has some issues, but is a pretty safe title to recommend if you are at all tolerable of open-world stuff. and Or if you're just interested in, like, weird Japanese stuff. And, you know, this is reasonably accessible as far as that goes. They explain things fairly well for someone coming in from an outsider perspective. And it feels like if you... just having an above-average interest in Japanese stuff, but not necessarily knowing the context for what's happening, they do a reasonable... Um, they, they do a reasonable amount of legwork in explaining the weird shit that's happening, the motivations of the characters, roughly what they're doing, and what the players must do to progress. It feels like it has internal logic, even if it doesn't always spell that out. Anyway, I should probably skip this. Yeah, we'll go ahead and... Get the feeling there's probably not going to be a credit stinger. Well, maybe there is. I guess that's the end there. All right. Hey, all right. Your Suchigumo Kifuda transformed into transmission beads. Bonus content will be in your inventory to you start a new game. Okay, so I'm guessing this is new game plus. Okay, that stuff carries over. Fair enough. Okay, stamps. Yeah, this is the this is where you can start to see the AAA influence. Just a lot of bonus stuff that doesn't necessarily is, is mostly just extra content, extra character stuff, or how even to phrase this? It's fluff, basically. It's flair. It's stuff the game doesn't really need, doesn't necessarily benefit from, but isn't really a serious problem. But probably was just extra hassle to put in, but eh, whatever. It is a very photogenic game, so I can forgive the game wanting the player to flirt around the city and fuck around a bit and have their fun on their own terms, even if that kind of runs contrary to the plot of the game. Ah, well. Like Zero says, AAA gonna AAA. But thanks everyone for tuning in, have a good night, glad we were able to finish this, glad I finally got around to playing it. I will... We'll be back to Baldur's Gate 3 next week. I'll be taking the following week off just to to the usual break time between games. We'll figure out what to play at some point. I'll throw a poll up probably sometime during the Belter's Gate 3 stream. 
And tomorrow night I'll be playing a Toho Hero of Ice Fairy, which is a rather another interesting little fan game in the Toho universe. Like a lot of those lately, and this game's got a really it's got some interesting things to recommend about it, even if it sticks a little closer to the Don Maku fights of the top-down shooters. But yeah, have a good night, everyone. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. It is a nine-ball game, yes.